Hello everyone! Happy Tuesday! Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central Time, and we relax and craft and work on a project together. Uh, thanks for joining me. I see you guys starting to pop in, and thank you Replay viewers and YouTube viewers as well. This will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube when we're done here tonight. So we've been working on block three of the I Love Home block of the month quilt along by Jacqueline Steves. So we are hopefully going to finish up the needle turn applique tonight. So uh, you can do this however you want, but the way that we've decided to do it, I'm doing the plants, the ground, and all the hearts in these blocks as needle turn applique, and the rest I'm gonna embroider. So we got pretty far on the flower. Uh, yesterday we got the little circle in and a leaf or two. And today we just need to do the two leaves and the bottom grass and we will be good to go for the day. So thanks again for joining me. I am going to flip you around and we will get started. Uh, if you want to join in on this on this uh, stitch along, on this uh, block of the month quilt along, it is free. And there was one more block, there's four blocks total, and then we will be sewing it into a quilt as well. There's quilt instructions with like really pretty cute borders and, and all that with it. Uh, so if you just go to the link I have in my post here, it's on the Jacqueline Steves blog, uh, you can sign up for the quilt along and the patterns will get mailed, emailed to you, so uh, for free. So plenty of time to join. I'm here every night stitching on it uh, till the block is done and then a new block is released every month. So we'll get one more in December and then uh, the, oh no, 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 in November and then December, we will be sewing it into the quilt. We'll get the quilting instructions. So awesome guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get started. Okie doke, here we are. So we did get, uh, yesterday we made that circle and I think did we, yeah, we did two, two leaves yesterday. Oh, you got your fabric bundle, nice, Tamara. Yay, good to hear. Um, all right, and we have two more leaves to do, so let's get started on that. I am sad to say that I am double sweatering it again. Ugh. We had a frost advisory last night. I haven't checked on the garden. It was too cold to go out. <laughs> I'm the worst. But I do have a uh, sweater upon sweater tonight, which I'm not, not happy about. And my feet are cold and I don't know. I'm over the cold already and we, this is our first day of cold. <laughs> yeah, we turned the heat on inside for the first time. I hope we, this can't be the last, uh, you know, we got to have at least a couple good days left, I would hope. But right now it's, it's chilly. All right, let's do that guy. I'm going to grab one of my little applique pins here. I'm trying to match up my blue lines, although uh, this looks a little bit bigger than what I got on the back here. So we'll just kind of, we'll probably go with what my front lines are. We'll see, see how it turns out. Oh, now I moved it around again. I am trying to match this point to the stem though. Tilting it up in the same direction. All right, that's what we'll do. Oh, you're tired of summer there in Atlanta, oh man. You say that, but I don't know if you're up here. It's, there's not a lot of in between, <laughs> warm and cold. All right, we're ready to go. We're almost done with block two. Nice, Sherry. All right, let's get these leaves happening tonight. I'm hoping it goes pretty quick. And then we can stitch on that, uh, we can stitch on this bottom grass too. All right, stitching that first stitch. You're ready for sweater weather there. Oh man, 80s, 
80 still by you. I wouldn't mind another 80 day. I, I like, I like a little steamy warm stuff. Especially in late fall when you have kind of the small, the fall smells and stuff. That's, that's nice with a warm day. All right. I think once I get to this point, I will remove my pin from the back. Let's poof that out a little bit more. So I am, I am using my leaf drawing on the front as my guide, not so much on the back. That's okay. I don't know about you guys, but it feels like Thursday or Friday today already. <laughs> I had to remember what day it was uh, before I came on here, and I was like, oh man, it's only Tuesday. <laughs> it should be weekend. That's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm ready for some weekend. I worked the last couple of weekends, so I think this weekend... This weekend I'm gonna chill. I have a craft project in mind, and we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully I can just sit and work on that. Maybe watch some movies or something. All right, I'm just trimming this a bit. It's a lot all the way around. Let's just trim, trim some more. Might as well. All right. Uh, let's tuck that under. Oh, you feel like it's later in the week too, Patricia? Yeah, I don't know. It's weird this week. I don't know. All right, tucking that. Under two. Oh, we're getting better at that. That's a decent, decent point right away. I can stitch that down. Trying to stuff that thread under, or the, the fabric. Tuck it under, tuck it into that point. Make a cold frame for the for the crops. I we did cover yesterday we did cover the garden with um with some of that we used to cover it with like just sheets but then we got some of um that freezer fr or that frost sort of um it's not really a blanket it, it's kind of just I don't know some weird material but it, it's like a sheet but it allows sunlight and, and airflow through it. So we, we put those on it. We actually originally purchased those to keep moths off um, if moths kept getting getting um, lettuce or something, which it wasn't too horrible this year, so we didn't, we didn't put them up. But that's what we originally got them for, but they are meant for, um, for frost. So we got those out, threw it over the kale. Frost cloth, yeah. Um, threw it over the kale and some of the lettuce we had. I'm not sure how the lettuce would have fared. Um, I don't think it got down quite as cold as what they said it was going to. I think it was in the mid 30s instead of the low 30s. So um, we'll see how it goes. Oh, I did cover up the zucchini too because we have a couple little baby zucchinis hanging out, hanging out there yet. And I figured if those froze, they would just kind of melt. Um, so, I don't know, I'll have to, I'll have to brave the cold tomorrow. <laughs> it's like barely cold, but for how it's been, it's cold. If you're talking real winter and whatever, it's not cold at all, but if you're talking I'm a wimp and want it to be nicer out, then it's cold. And I'm wearing two sweaters. <laughs> All right, we are approaching this second point. I'm, I'm gonna just use my back one as a guide now because I do want my point to go all the way to the edge. So this, this leaf might be a little bit bigger than our other leaves, but who cares? All right, so I'm gonna try and get it right by the stem so it's not floating out in space. 
we'll go around that point one more time. Keep stabbing myself, um, my back finger a little bit, but not too bad. Built up those crafting calluses, right? I'm gonna snip a little bit more off of there. That's a lot of, a lot of fabric there. Hello, everyone um, who's just joining. Appreciate you coming in again tonight. Hoping to finish up the needle turn on this, and this one does not want to get tucked under. I'm kind of being a little clumsy with this last tuck under, but since the shape it makes is almost like um, the shape of the leaf. I'm just kind of dealing with it, but I'm not, I'm not doing it a little bit at a time and, and stuff. It's just kind of like a big flat fold over, but I think it, it does the job just fine. Talking a little bit more there. All right. All right, a couple more stitches and this guy will be done. I think I do need to shape it a little bit more though, now that I'm a stitch or two in. Yep, this one's a wee bit bigger. I think I'm just gonna come up right on that point and then it'll squish it down with a stitch. There, that kind of tucked it in for me. Forced it down there. All right, and then I think I'll just head to the back here and tie it off. One down. These leaves are going quicker after doing uh, four, four of them. One more to go. I think I can use my same thread here. It's not too, it's not too twisty yet. And we prepped our leaves yesterday, so that's saving us time today. Oh, you're gonna use sky blue for your house embroidery. Oh, Gretchen, that sounds like it'd be super pretty. Super duper pretty. All right, here's my last one. This one looks like I drew it on a hair bigger too, but who cares? Um, where'd my pin go? Right here, Oop. there we go. Oh, thanks, Alice. All right, pin that down from the back. Again, we're pinning from the back just to temporarily hold it, but if it's on the back, our thread won't catch on any of the pin bits there. Oh, well, I hope you feel better soon, Rosalie. Yeah, um, I mean, these leaves are so small. But that's good that you like doing, doing them. I'm, I'm a little undecided on all these little itty bitty pieces yet if I'm enjoying them or not. I really think it's cool afterwards. Like I think this flower completely needle turned um, and it being so little is like super neat. Like I love, I love it all together. Like I love all that there's, it's made out of so many pieces. This just for this teeny flower. Like I like that, but I'm not sure. I'm a huge fan of all these um, itty bitty pieces, but you know. I'm getting a little bit of a hang of it though, I think. It's getting getting a little faster. Oh, kind of like a plaid look. Oh, it does kind of look like that, Gretchen. Thanks, I, I'm, I am uh, happy with the flower. Uh, our little fuzzles that we didn't quite get, we kind of covered up with the circle, so that's, that turned out fine. It was kind of 
a fun challenge to do it all with one piece of fabric instead of um, instead of like five different petals. So that was a that was a fun little challenge. I liked putting in these little mini challenges. I love um just trying new things and uh, with crafting and trying to get better, trying to improve and try new things. Oh yeah, I, I, I think so too, Joyce. It's, it's, uh, I mean, we could have had this done in one day, right? With, um, if we did the, the fusible way of, of applique, which is perfectly lovely. Um, but there's something special about needle turn. It just looks really old and, and you know that someone put, uh, it's all like handwork. Someone that spent time doing all that handwork. And I, I like how they, it floats off the, um, off the background a little bit, you know, cause you're tucking it under. So each piece is kind of propped up a little bit and just tacked down. I think it's just a really sweet kind of look. Feel like I'm doing something that they did, you know, someone in a little living room a hundred years ago was doing, you know? And that makes me happy. All right, that, that fold I did not do well. Wonder what those ladies would think. They'd, uh, they'd probably not be happy with my, my, uh, stitches, but that's okay. <laughs> they can be mad at me. Oh, awesome! You downloaded the um, unicorn pattern. Yeah, I'm hoping, I, I haven't had time to do it yet, but I will get a um, kind of a little schedule of the next projects coming up. Um, the rest of this month will be just a finish it fall, so we'll, we'll go back to, yeah, by candlelight, right, Gina? Um, we'll go back to the uh, English paper piecing project, the hand stitched English paper piecing um, with Blair Stocker, uh, the Wisecraft book from the Wisecraft book, what, what, right? Wisecraft quilt. Tongue twistered to myself just then. Um, we'll do that first. I have my pillow form for it purchased. Uh, I got at least a day's worth of um, stitching shapes together yet, and then. Um, I want to turn it into a pillow, so we'll hand stitch it to, you know, a, a front. I'll have to get some fabric for that. But yeah, so that's that's what's coming up next is kind of a, I'm calling it finish it fall. <laughs> so the rest of October when we're done with this block, which would be in maybe a little over a week, um, we'll we'll work on finishing that up. Oh yeah, for sure, Gretchen. All right, this little point, and now we just have that tiny little bit left, but you know what, that is a lot of fabric, so let's, let's trim that way down. Less to try and stuff in here, and get a little bit more of that back fabric out. All right, let's fold it perpendicular to that point, and then we'll try and stuff it into there. Ooh, popped out already. Get the needle working for us, I think. Ooh, let's start over. And I'm fraying it now too. You don't want to handle it too much because then it'll start to fray and... Oh wow, it just doesn't want to turn at all. All right, needle, you're up. We'll go little by little. There we go. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna frame yours. Yeah, you're gonna buy a frame for yours. 
Yeah, I, I liked that idea a lot of the frame, but um, we just we just kind of cleaned up a little bit, and I'm trying not to have so much stuff on the walls. We've kind of designated areas for it, and we have like so much um, stuff already. So I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want another thing on the wall, um, but I can always use another another pillow. And I think this will just be a really fun, bright pillow for our, for our living room. And we'll kind of go with a quilt that I already have in the living room. So mine's going to be a pillow. Oh, you started a second one with different fabrics, Lucy. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, Gretchen, are you, are you talking about um, the person who made theirs into a banner? That, that was pretty cool, I thought, with the, the text like screen printed onto it or painted onto it somehow. That was kind of cool. Selling fray off or product to stop fraying. Um, I have, I've heard of it. I haven't heard specifically about fray off, but I've, I've heard that that's a thing that you can get, um, to stop the fraying. I've not tried that before. If I would do like way more needle turn applique like this, I would consider trying it maybe, but I feel like I would use that so little. I don't know. Maybe I should get some and try it out. Oh, you're going to turn your blocks into a, a wall hanger? Oh, for your sewing room. Oh, Sherry, that sounds neat. Oh, man, I feel like I... Oh, I did! <laughs> All right, well, it's going to be one of those days. I'm like, this feels funny. Look, I, I, stitched, uh, I stitched the back onto there, so that's not going to work. Let's see, how far back did I do that? Boo! Let's see if I can unstitch that. I was thinking about that the other night, too. I was thinking, oh, I gotta watch out so I don't stitch my back on, and then, you know, then today I do that. There we go, okay, that's one, but I stitched another bit on. Boo! I've done that with machine stitching, though, too, and that's worse, I think. This, I just have to unpick a couple stitches. One more stitch. Ugh, that's a couple back. Boo! Oh, for your, like your embroidery edges. Oh, that makes sense for like the the edge of your um edge of the embroidery. Let's see, is that the one? Nope, one more. There we go. Oh, did I get one last little stitch down? Well, good thing we are all prepped for tonight, because I was thinking we were going to get done a little bit early, but now I don't know so much. All right, I'm, I'm hoping that's the last bit. All right, good. <laughs> there we go. We're back in business. Lame. It seriously was in the back of my head yesterday, like, oh, I got to make sure not to sew in. <laughs> like, hopefully I don't accidentally catch catch this, and then today I do it. So, all right, where are we at? Let's try that again. <laughs> Watch, I'll do it like a second time, right? That'd be, that'd be good. I think I did that during the Splendid Sampler. I fused... I fused some of that fusible for Raj applique. I think I fused it on the front instead of the back twice in a row. So that was fun. <laughs> so that's what I get for late night crafting. Ah, oh, well, here we are. Oh, you slow in your clothes shirt. Oh, that's funny, Gretchen. <laughs> I, now that you say that, though, I think I've, I'm pretty sure I've done that before, too. <laughs> uh, and it's like, oh, man. And you just hope that you don't have to go too far back or you can cut it out easily or something, you know? Oop, forgot to tie a knot.
Those leaves were just going too easily tonight, right? Something had to happen. All right. There we go. So our flower should be done. Oh, and you know, when we're done with, with all of the blocks, then I'll go and take off the water soluble um, um, marking pen all at once. But there we go, all our little leaves. They're looking so cute. I love it. Um, I would love to do a whole quilt that's just all needle turn applique like this. It would take years and years probably. Uh, but I love, I, I just, I'm really liking the needle turn. I find it just so relaxing. Uh, and it's cute. It's like a little cute thing you have when you're finished. I'm liking it. All right, let's get, um, let's get this guy on here. So I think I might just, instead of tracing anything, I think I might just, oh, I haven't used this at all yet, it looks like. Oh, I must have cut something off of here at one point. But I think I'm going to just kind of follow the line of this a little bit. I'm going to start it a little ways over. Oh, thanks, Rosalie. I'm going to start a little ways over from here, just, um, just so I have enough to kind of crop it how I want. And I think I'm just going to follow this line a little bit. I don't think I need too much because I'll just, I'll just needle turn it to, to the line here. So I'm going to just add a little curve there. I think that's plenty good. It's so flat, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Yeah, I, I don't even think I'm going to curve it there. So I'm going to just kind of cut along the bottom edge here. And this is going to be our grass. I'm not going to get too crazy about it. I'm making sure that I'm not cutting my bottom fabric. All this is going to be trimmed, so I don't have to worry too much about it being perfect. All I want to worry about is that it's far enough over. So I'm just going to snip up like that. I don't think I need to press it at all. And we will just plop this on right here. So I am going to throw some pins in. So remember, I, I am going to cut off more on this side than this side because I think I, I traced it a little too far over. So I want to make sure I have enough fabric over here and enough seam allowance. So that's plenty of seam allowance, I think. I think right about there will be just fine. So let's throw a few pins in. I have some pins floating all over here, so let's let's throw all three of them in. I'm just going to I'm going to stitch from uh, right to left again. So I'm going to start over here. So I'll throw some pins in on this side. We'll do two more. I love this grass though. I feel like it looks like, um, I don't know, do you guys have to deal with creeping Charlies at all? We have creeping Charlies uh, grown in our front yard and every year they get a little farther and we try and take care of them every year, but they're kind of one of those, you're screwed if you have them because you'll always have them sort of plants. And uh, you know, it's rampant in our neighborhood. Uh, you know, some some people have perfect lawns. Maybe it's just a whole, we just have to take care of our lawn more, but it's kind of like you got to round up everything and then and then um, start fresh almost. And we haven't we haven't been doing that. Those are really cute pins. Oh, the pins. Oh, I might not have put a link in in my uh, blog yet, but or in my uh, post here. They are um, they're applique pins. So these are from Clover. Uh, you can see the little clover label there, but I love the container that they're in. So what's nice about them is that they are so little. Like, look at this um, T-pin, for an example, how much bigger it is. Um, and that's that's why they're nice, I think, for applique, is that they are so little. So you, you're not stabbing yourself because um, they don't have, you know, they go from here to here. So you know you're not going to have, like, a pin sticking out to here that you can get yourself with. But yeah, and again, I'm going from the back to the front and then to the back again because then I have no little, um, the head of the pin and the point aren't going to catch my thread here. 
Therefore, oh, T-pins. Um, I think, I don't know why I have them, but I think they're more, they're used for like knits, like big bulky knits, I think. I have them on hand. Um, I think I got them for free somewhere, um, like at a, at a rummage sale or something. And I use them to, I use them to stuff, um, stuff, stuffed animals, like to move stuffed animals around. So like, or the stuffing. So like this guy, for example, if I, if he had a little like indent and I want to poof him out there, I would stick the tea pin in and kind of poof him out. Um, you know, so, cause it's kind of like a built in handle. That is definitely not <laughs> what they're intended for. Uh, I believe it's, I believe they're for knits. I don't know. Someone let me know if I'm, I'm wrong. So less in quilty land and more in, um, Cloth making land. You have Hilla, Hilla. Oh, I've never heard of that. With little thorns in your grass. Ooh. Oh, but it makes a pretty blossom. Yeah, I was. I think the the creeping Charlie does make pretty purple flowers, but yeah, it's it's very much invasive. We we did some research on it. So I'm my my um the drawing ends here, but I'm just kind of extending the curve. Oh, you use T-pins to put your quilts, your quilts on a big frame for hand quilting. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, the T-pins that I have are, I don't know if this is a common trait for T-pins. I don't know much about T-pins, actually. But um, they're pretty hefty. Like, it would be tough to, to bend them and stuff. All right. You know what? Let's get a little bit of handle on here. You know what? I think I need to get these pins higher up. They're not working well for me down there. I need a little extra hand up here to get started. Oh yeah, or, or upholstery or something maybe. Yeah, that would make sense. But yeah, there it's definitely heftier than other pins that I have. But yeah, I use it for moving around, stuffing. And stuffed animals. And actually I, I usually tie a little piece of yarn on them too on the tea part and then um, put it around my wrist because when I'm stuffing I'm kind of making a flinging motion and every once in a while I'll fling it across the room and it'll get lost. Um, so I put that little um, wristband on it basically and then if I accidentally fling it it's still attached to me. <laughs> kind of like um the Nintendo Wii that's where where the idea came from. My brother thought of it. I think that was when the Nintendo Wii's you know first came out or something and we were playing with it and I was crafting and I kept flinging flinging the tea pin across the room. Oh yeah they hurt if you stick yourself. Yeah exactly. Hence the problem of them flinging across the room and disappearing into, into the carpet or something. All right, so now I'm approaching my actual line. I'm gonna shape it to that a little bit more now. But yeah, very much uh, a creeping Charlie fabric here, I think. Oh, you almost broke the, your TV with the Wii remotes. Well, you're supposed to put the put the armband around. They give you that warning at the beginning <laughs> every time you turn it on. <laughs> but yeah, that's where the idea came from. That's fun. I haven't haven't played a Wii game in a long time. <laughs> Flinging your straw needles during the... Oh, man! Yeah, I bet you those would be hard to find. Flinging the straw needles during the English paper piecing project. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> those little thin... At least they're long, but yeah, they're so fine. Oh, you used T-pins for macrame in the 70s. Oh, that's interesting. 
to kind of hold down areas while you work on other areas or like making like loops come out sort of thing that that would make sense I'm sure they have a very specific purpose and reason why they have the tea and, and all that. I just, I just don't know what it is. All right, I'm just kind of pre-tucking the next area. Okay, see, so this is why we're doing the ground last is so we could cover up um, cover up the flower. Um, Alice, I can't quite remember if I put a link to the the um, clover pins in the applique pins in the, this post. Uh, but if I don't have it here now, I will put it in when I'm done. So it'll be, um, it'll be in the replay of this on Facebook, and it will also be in the replay on on YouTube. I just gotta. I'm not quite positive that I that I put the link in or not right now during the live one. Might be there, but I have a hunch that I forgot to do that. But yeah, we've been talking about them a lot, so I, I should make sure to put them in there. Oh, no problem. So actually, now that I'm doing a bigger piece of fabric, it is nice to not have it flop around all over the place when, you know, like with these smaller things. Actually, I think I remember that being um, a thing with English, with uh, foundation paper piecing during the Splendid Sampler. I, I really enjoyed the smaller designs versus the um, larger ones because on the larger ones the fabric kept flopping around so I'd have to put more pins in or or glue them down more whereas with the little pieces of fabric they just kind of stay in place. All right let's fold some more. I like this fabric. Well, to remember to use it more. Um, I guess the only block we have left is block four, so hopefully I can use it again in block four. Although we're using it for a big, a pretty prominent area in this block, so maybe we won't want it. Um, want it in the in another one. Oh, foundation piecing. So that is we should do another one of those projects because um, though we can make that a small project even. But it is, uh, it's kind of a really cool technique where you have a really intricate design. Um, I mean, it looks like magic. So, like, the finished piece would be uh, uh, something that you've sewn, like a block or, or quilt or something, where it looks um, super intricate. Like, you know, you could do a whole character or... Um, you know, a whole intricate design where you're like, oh my God, how did they piece that? Because it's all machine sewn. Uh, but what it is, is um, you, it's printed out onto paper and then you sew right on the paper as your guide and then you're making all these intricate bits. It tells you what order to sew it in and um, it's kind of neat. I, I feel like it's like magic. So, um, and it's one of my, my favorite things and we haven't done it in a while. So that would be a fun, maybe small project that we could we could throw in in between some of these big projects. There's some very good, cute designs out there. Now, yeah, it really is um, pretty magic. If you just Google paper piecing or foundation paper piecing, um, you'll probably see a whole pile of intricate designs. Yeah, so like. Um, the dress block, yeah, like like Deborah says, the dress block. Like they look magic because if you have no idea how they sewed them together, it, it would be like, wow, some mathematical sewing genius put this together somehow, you know? Um, how do they know how to cut this just right? And then they sewed this really intricate triangle to this other intricate triangle and 
to get this shape and it, it just looks like crazy town magic, but it's all part of the, the process. But I like, I like it. I think that's what I like about it is that it's kind of magic. So we did a cute little project before the splendid sampler, a like really itty bitty paper piecing. Um, maybe we can do another thing like, like that. I'll have to contact the designer and see if we can do that. That'd be kind of fun. Another thing to, to look into, I'm looking for little small projects like that for, for this next year. We got, we got a bunch of, and for the end of the year, we got a bunch of big projects that will take, you know, large chunks of time, but I definitely like slipping in some of these smaller projects because, you know, every once in a while you just need a win, right? Yeah, you need a, oh, I finished this in three days and look, I made something and it's cute and woohoo, that, that feeling of um, accomplishing something. Especially when you're working on a, a big project that, you know, has a long deadline that's more of a marathon. Um, you want those, cute, those nice little wins in there. All right, we're a little over halfway here. I'm just going to kind of help tuck it a little bit. So this is kind of um, the slow arch. It kind of stops, it kind of gets straight at the end. I think I'm gonna try and make it kind of like a, a gentle arch as I, as I go off over this way too. Just barely. Um, just to kind of repeat that shape. There, I think that looks pretty good. So see, it's a, it's a little curvier than straight right here. I kind of I kind of like that. I think it balances it out a little bit. All right. We are getting there. Actually, I might just pin that down like that. Why don't I take this pin out? Oh, I'll just um, pin it up a little higher so it gets that seam allowance in too. There we go. And then as I get closer to there, I can, I can adjust. But then that little arch that I made is still, still in there. I'd like to see you use color in one of your embroideries. Rosalie, so I definitely want to do that. I definitely want to do an embroidery where we add color to it. And you know what? I also want to do, oh, did I, I must have tied this in a funny knot or something. But I also want to do the stitch your favorite recipe. Um, so I have, I have, we talked about this a little bit, but I have a recipe for um, some of the angel food candy that my grandma used to make. And it's written in her handwriting. I thought it might be fun to stitch something stitch some handwriting, like a handwriting stitching project. Did you say you're doing the chevron? Yep, the chevron pattern. I think it's called Charming Chevrons by Krista Watson. Yes. Oh, I missed, I missed the rest of that. Um, she's also doing a quilt along in January of her squiggles pattern. Oh, that's cool. Um, January is probably about, eh, maybe a little, maybe a little later then January is when we'll start that project. Cause you know, this we'll, we'll be turning this into a quilt and that might take some time yet. Or I don't remember. I did put that on, on, on the calendar. I'll have to check, check on that. Use color on that. Oh yeah. We could use color on the recipe thing for sure. Um, I just said another thing, didn't I? Oh, I think uh, it'd be fun to do. I have that, those two bird patterns, the tweet wreath and tweet house. And the and they both look like they could be very holiday-ish. Um, like, especially if you used kind of holiday winter colors on them. So I thought that might be really fun. Um, like they both look like they would do well with some some coloring on them. So I thought maybe we'd we do those for the coloring test. And then I just want to do, we'll do the um, recipe thing as a, as an extra thing. So, um, maybe I'm hoping we get to that before the end of the year, but you know, time goes by quick, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that will be on the agenda somewhere though. So if you have a favorite recipe or some sort of text, 
that someone wrote or that you wrote or that a, a kid wrote or something that you would like to turn into embroidery, um, I think we'll be doing that as a project sometime. Jacqueline Steves posted a free sweet fall pumpkin. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Um, Gretchen, I think what they're meaning is, and I have not done it, so I don't actually know the whole process, but you can take like crayons, like we could color in, like add some color with this, with some fabric crayons or something um, to add like a little bits of pretty color. You know, like if we wanted like pink frosted windows, I don't know, that was the first thing that came in my head. Um, or whatever, we can actually color it in on the fabric first and then heat set it somehow and then stitch. So you have this pretty color and then add some, some stitches to it. I think that'd be fun. All right, I'm gonna remove this pin. I have not tried it before, so, um, and it's been requested by a few of you, so I think, I think that'd be a fun project. I have not done it. So we would probably do it with, um, with one of my patterns. And yeah, so I'm thinking that the tweet house or the tweet wreath, and I have a really cute way of crocheting. You know how we've, we've decorated the edge of our embroidery hoops and framed an embroidery in, but we've decorated the edge with fabric wrapped around it. Um, we can, uh, the, I've done it before where you crochet a little edging around it. And I thought that might be fun to try. Just kind of like a simple crocheted edge. Oh, you have old letters from your grandma. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh no, no paintbrush. I think it's I think it's just like a crayon or a crayon of some sort. I think I think someone mentioned it just now, but it, it flew by too quick for me. Um, so I'll do a little research on that and uh, see what we need. And yeah, so you can do it with what, whatever embroidery you, you want, but I think. I think I'll, here we'll do one or the other, like, you know, maybe both will be an option. Maybe we'll do both um, the, the tweet house and the tweet wreath patterns. Cause they, they look kinda, they feel kinda holiday-ish. There's a little wreath and I've stitched it for a holiday project already. And it, it's really cute and like blues with red berries and stuff. And then the little house with the two birds in it would be really cute decorated with all holiday colors, I think. Use crayons and iron them onto paper until it does not come off. Now iron them onto paper. Okay, so you, you color on with crayons and then you put paper on top of your piece and then keep ironing on the paper until it doesn't come off anymore. Is that kind of what you're saying, Rosalie? That sounds kind of fun. I definitely have plain crayons here somewhere in a drawer. I know where, but I haven't looked in that drawer in a long time. Um, That'd be real fun. I haven't done any coloring in a long time and um, I used to do, you know, in high school, a lot of like colored pencil-y type stuff. And I don't know, that, that'd be fun. I think it'd feel very artsy for sure. Oh, all can be used. Fabric markers, colored pencils. Well, we will have to try that out. You looked in the crayon inverter, you used just regular crayons, okay. We're going to give it a go. Maybe we'll try different mediums. Maybe we'll try crayons and also try colored pencils since I have both, both nearby. All right. While we are chatting, we finished this up. It wasn't even just, I'm like, oh, I just tied the knot for this and we're, we're done. So, all right, let's uh, see what we got here. Put the paper on the ironing board. Oh, and then, oh, and then iron onto the fabric. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, we'll try that. I, I love that idea. But yeah, so the tweet house is, you know, a cute little house like this, but with little birds. And I think that'd be easy to make it, you know, holiday-ish. Oh, I love, um, I love my creeping Charlies. Ugh, so funny. Well, there we are. See, now we've, we've covered up that stem here. We probably could have trimmed it, but I didn't think about that. Got our flower, our three hearts. So uh, tomorrow, um, have, oh, you found glitter in the crayons and that worked too for the coloring, that's interesting. Uh, so tomorrow we will start, not with this though, with my big, my big floss here, we will start uh, the embroidery. So we'll do probably backstitch for all of it, but then we'll do like the little fly 
the little fly stitches for these little scallops, kind of like how we did in the last last one. Maybe we'll do like a fat stitch for the, the door again. I, I thought that was kind of cute. And I don't know, maybe a French knot or two for, for the doorknob or a big French knot. I don't know. Uh, but that, that'll be the plan for tomorrow. So we are officially done needle turning block three, which is awesome. <laughs> That's, I think it takes the longest, uh, but it's so relaxing. I, I really do enjoy it. Okay guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we will call it an evening. I definitely think I improved along the way too. So that's always fun to see. Alrighty guys, here it is. Oh, that flower all needle turn is cool. It kind of makes me wish I did the whole thing needle turn, but I was too scared to do that and I wanted to experiment with that uh, combo of embroidery and needle turn so I went that direction but I don't know that's making me want to do more needle turn <laughs> awesome so thanks so much guys I will if the clover applique pins are not in my post here I will put that in right now so give me a few minutes and it will be in the replay in about um, 20 minutes or so and then it will also be in the replay that gets uploaded to YouTube if you're looking for some of those pins uh, I think I'm uh, every time I use them I'm I think I'm using them uh, better <laughs> as well so this is definitely uh, improve as you go craft this needle turn I think uh, but I, I'm really really enjoying it so thanks guys we will start embroidery tomorrow and I will see you then have a good Wednesday tomorrow Good night.